Hey bag ladies and bag dudes, today I'm going to be talking about the ring ruler, various animal fabrics that I added to my stash, the book called Start Finishing by Charlie Gilkey, the Kona 2020 calendar, and also the Quilters puzzle book. I'll be demonstrating how to sew zipper tabs so that they look nice in your finished bag or pouch, and there's a great giveaway at the end. I'm Sarah Lawson from Sew Sweetness. Thanks so much for joining me for Social Sunday, my weekly sewing challenge. Hey everybody, happy Sunday. Welcome to Social Sunday. Thank you so much for joining me. If you're watching me live, I saw everyone chatting before the show on Facebook and YouTube. And if you watch our show later on in, in the week, the recording either on Facebook or YouTube, thank you so much for tuning in to watch our show. I see Kathy's watching from New Hampshire, Medea from Hungary, Sheila from Tecla, Texas. So thank you everyone for watching. Um, I had some concerned questions regarding uh, my finger this past week. I posted earlier in the week on Facebook that um, it finally happened. I finally sewed through my finger. Um, I, I, I don't recall exactly what happened. I feel like my mind kind of glossed over. <laughs> Charlie says, Sarah, hold up your hands, please. We need to count fingers. So I actually have two finger stories for this week. And my second finger story happened like 10 minutes ago. So the first finger story is I was sewing, um, I was basting fabric to interfacing and the needle went through my finger, not through my nail, just through my finger and it came out the other side and because I have a straight stitch only machine, uh, the hole for my needle is really small. It's not a bigger rectangular area, it's a small hole and so as, I don't mean to gross anyone out, but as the needle went through my finger, it kind of bent to the side slightly and it hit my uh, metal plate on my sewing machine and it broke in half while, was, while it was in my finger as it hit the bed and so I had two halves of the needle in my finger I was able to pull one half out off the top the other half uh, which was uh, the pointy part of the needle where the thread goes through near that area that part was kind of slippery in my fingers I wasn't able to pull it out so I had to wake Danny up Danny was sleeping and uh, so he groggily got out of bed he grabbed a couple of pliers the first set wasn't able to get the needle out and I started panicking because I'm envisioning my head in my head we're driving to the hospital and I um, have this needle sticking out of my finger and whatever it wasn't very pleasant to look at I started to freak out but thankfully the second set of pliers he was able on the second try to pull the other half of the needle out so um, I did go to the doctor that same day because some people in the Facebook group suggested an x-ray might be a good idea just to make sure there was no metal left behind. I did get a tetanus shot last year, so I was covered in that area. Actually, the day after the, the accident, my, it was my right pinky. Uh, the pinky felt pretty good, like it didn't feel bruised or that, all that tender to the touch, so I guess I was lucky in that regard. Um, the second finger accident happened about 10 minutes before the show. I was reaching down, I keep like a ceramic uh, a cup or a mug, something like that, underneath my desk on the floor with a bunch of scissors and tools in it and my rotary cutters and I reached in to grab a pair of scissors and uh, somehow the rotary cutter blade was exposed and kind of nicked my finger. So couldn't find any band-aids, of course. So I'm running around the house with toilet paper wrapped around my finger, trying to get everything ready for the show, trying not to bleed on anything. So. Um, I think I'm good on the finger emergencies for the rest of the year. So thank you everyone for your concern about that. Um, anyway, let's get on with the show. Um, just about everything that I talk about during Social Sunday are things that I purchased myself. So th these are not things that I'm getting paid to talk to you about, but just cool things that I found that I'd like to share with you. And everything that I'm scheduled to talk about, I link to in the description. So if you're interested in finding out more about any of the fabrics, notions, projects, or books that I talk about during Social Sunday, just check that link in the description and you can find out more information there. So a couple of reminders before we get over to the notion of the week, um, gift certificates. I've had a lot of family members purchasing gift certificates in the past week for Christmas gifts. Um, so we do have that these available on the websites in varying amounts. Um, I've linked to the gift certificate product listing in tonight's description, so in case you would like to um, subtly slip any of your family members the link to the gift certificates. Um, in case you'd like to pick up some cork or patterns after the holidays, that link is there for you. 
Um, also, I promised to let you know when uh, the zippers by the yard tape and pulls uh, were back in stock, and we do have them back in stock now, along with some brand new zipper pulls in silver and rainbow finish, and Danny's gonna put um, some pictures up on the screen of the new zipper pulls that we got in to go along with our zippers by the yard. Um, so while these are filtering through, some really pretty designs, um, again, in both silver and rainbow, that's, that's a flower, flower design. Uh, this is the first of the two heart designs. That's my favorite pull, that really long pull. It's really um, like substantial. Print. Yeah, that, there's that heart print again. Um, and there's another zipper pull with a heart cut out and, um, of course, Mickey Mouse. Um, so the new zipper pulls are a lot of fun. I've also linked to, in case you've never installed, uh, zipper pulls on zippers by the yard. Uh, we did a video in the past on how to do that using just a fork, which everyone has around their kitchen. Um, it's really fast and easy, and with the use of the fork, you don't need anyone else to help you or an extra pair of hands, so um, that's nice. And I also, because it's come up in a couple questions in the past, um, our zipper pulls are meant to coordinate with our zippers by the yard since they're made by the same manufacturer. If you've purchased other zippers by the yard, um, or pulls in the past, they might might not coordinate if um, they've been made by a different manufacturer. So I just wanted to give everyone the heads up um, just so there's no uh, disappointment in regards to the pulls or the zippers by the yard. Also our Tulip Pink fabric, uh, we've discounted to 50% off. We're work working on a brand new website, which we're really excited about, uh, but we're not carrying uh, a couple of our products over to the new sites, uh, the Tulip Pink fabric being one of those items. And so we've discounted everything that's left 50% uh, off. So it's a great deal. And we do have a few bundles left and the link to that is in the description. So let's get on over to the notion of the week. Um, this is uh, something I found that's rather cool. It's called a ring ruler, and as you can see, it's uh, a ruler in the round. I'm gonna jump over to the side camera and show you how it works. So I often get questions about people wanting to either reduce or enlarge pattern pieces. Uh, so for this example, I went off an email that I received recently, someone wanting to um, make the Amethyst Project bag, which is normally a rectangle. They wanted to make it square and they wanted to make it smaller. And I said, um, you can certainly do that, but you'll need to make adjustments to the length of your zipper that will go around that. And there's also a tab on one side. Um, and so um, my easy answer is to kind of go around the, the pattern piece, uh, take a, a, an estimate as far as the measurement goes and then work off that estimate in order to uh, work off a new measurement for your zipper and your tab. And so obviously a traditional ruler uh, won't do the trick because that's really hard to get around the curves. Um, but I found this ring ruler, um, which I really liked and because it's bendy, it can certainly go around the curves. I know there's um, dressmakers uh, measuring tapes that can also do something similar, but I really liked the the fact that this was on a curve. And what I would do um, to find out a new measurement for a zipper is I would make a mark with my pen or chalk on one of the straight edges. So right here, because the straight edge is really easy to mark with measure with your traditional ruler, um, you can just use that ring ruler to start at your marking. So I'm gonna put my one inch marking over here and then you can just go ahead and orient the ring ruler so you can get to your next measurement. So that would be um, one and five eighths and so I would add that to my measurements and go around my piece and then you can arrive at new measurements for different modifications that you might make to some of my patterns. So I thought this ruler was pretty nifty and it's available in two different sizes. Uh, this was the blue ruler and there's, there's also an additional size, an orange ruler. Um, I found both of those on Amazon so I thought this was pretty cool and I always like adding new tools uh, tools and things that make sewing a bit easier to my sewing stash. Um, Michelle Graham is wrapping up the Park Sling Backpack Sew Along in the Facebook group. So I wanted to announce the winner of the week six uh, for the Park Sling Sew Along and that's Donna Coy Alexander. So congratulations to you, Donna. Go ahead and drop me an email and I'll get you your prize. And thanks so much for, for participating in the Sew Along. My email is Sarah at sweetness.com and that's Sarah with no H. 
All right, Danny's favorite part of the Sunday show, we'd like to invite all the bag ladies and bag dudes to stand proud. Let us know in the comments if you're a bag lady or bag dude. I certainly am a proud bag lady. I actually dropped by my local quilt shop today and it's been a while and I forgot how, how much fun it is shopping for fabric in person. I was looking at some of the new Janome sewing machines they had set up. My local quilt shop does a fantastic job with having quilt kits and uh, fabric bundles and so it's really a joy to shop at my local quilt shop and hopefully you have a local quilt shop near you um, so you can do the same. So I've added a ton of new fabrics to my stash this week. Various fabrics but they are all animal themed fabrics and so that's why I wanted to show them to you tonight kind of all at once and also some hand sewing kits that I picked up. So I'm going to step over to the side camera and show you what those fabrics are. First off, I wanted to show you some um, kits that I picked up from the company Lolly and Grace. Um, actually, I'm going to have Danny put some pictures up on the screen for you really quick before I show you what's in these kits. Um, these are all Christmas themed uh, wool ornaments that you can make by hand and also some embroidered kits as well. Um, I thought they were super cute and um, just really creative and I'm looking forward to making some of these with Violet. So I just wanted to show you the ones that I picked up. So what's included in the kits is the floss, thread, needle, wool, everything you need. Um, the pattern pieces, they're already transferred. And um, I, I just thought they were really darling and kind of remind me of vintage style ornaments. So I picked up this um, ice skate too. Again, everything's included inside. The snowman I really liked. And last two kits, the Santa and the Polar Bear. So again, looking forward to stitching these with Violet. They look pretty, not too time consuming for the kits. And here's some of the, the fabrics that I picked up. So the first one is sort of like a watercolor bird print panel. So these are all wild birds on the panel. I thought they were really cool, really bright colors. And I thought it would be interesting because these are all smaller squares to make maybe zipper pouches with all of these, something like that. Um, yeah, lots of birds are represented. Let me show you a few more. I love the penguin. The penguin is just darling. And the link to this one is in the description. And then I have a whole bunch more to show you as well. So I love dogs. Um, I've mentioned on the show in the past that I worked at uh, dog, grooming and dog grooming and boarding kennel for several years. And so I always love collecting dog fabrics too, as well as horse fabrics. These are canvas prints. Um, I picked it up, picked this print up in two different colorways. Thought these were really cute with the little dogs all over. And then someone emailed me to let me know that this horse print was out. And not to let, let down the cat people. These are really great cat digital prints. So the great thing about digital prints is the colors are really vivid and the designs are super detailed like this one. So I got this print and there were a few coordinating prints to go along with that particular fabric. So this one is um, cats doing interesting things in little picture frames. So I thought these were really cute as well. And the fabric feels really nice. And let me show you the other cat prints that I got. Again, these, these colors in person are pretty amazing. I don't have many fabrics in my stash that have such bright colors. Yeah, so lots of cute cats on that one. And I've got one more cat print to show. This is cats, kind of like a panel print. So they're all in, gosh, this is such beautiful. It's, it's like artwork, really. There's another one over there. All right, so that's all the cat prints in this particular line that I picked up. I also got a lot of what's called, these are from Elizabeth's studio, and these are dog and cat selfies. So these are the, obviously the Christmas themed ones, very cute, lots of different breeds represented. Here's the cat version as well, something for Christmas. And then here's some summery dogs. And let me find the summery cats because those are cute also. Very cute fabrics. 
I love animals and so these are just great and here's just regular dogs and regular cats I love that <laughs> expression on that cat's face right there and a couple more I do have a bearded dragon I know I do realize that's not the same thing as um, a dragon of fantasy but I, I, I love this dragon scales print and this is also a digital print so digital prints are are going to be more vivid in color and then a few horse prints that I picked up. These are sort of uh, panel prints with a nice border going around the side if you know any horse lovers or if you're a horse lover yourself. Here's some horses in hexagons. And that's about all I've got. So lots of new animal fabrics that I've added to my stash. Let me pull these to the side so I have room for my uh, demo later on. I really shouldn't be adding more fabric since we're moving, but I just couldn't help myself. Those were really cute fabrics. So I have a question for, for you. Let me know in the comments. Um, what's your favorite animal? So my favorite animal is a horse. Uh, dog's a close second. Um, we had birds growing up. I love birds as well. I love all sorts of animals. So let me know what, what your favorite animal is. Um, all right, so last Sunday, oh, Trisha says, Sarah, did you see the Hot to Trot Horse Around Line by um, Ann Lauer of Grizzly Gulch Gallery. You have to check it out. I'll have to write that down. Hot to trot. Leave myself a couple of notes here. So last Sunday I mentioned I started reading a book called Start Finishing. It was written by Charlie Gilkey. Danny's going to put the, the cover of that book on the screen right now. Um, but I found this book to be really helpful as far as um, getting out of a slump either creatively if you're working on sewing projects or um, any kind of work related um, getting stuck in a rut so um, I, I'm not normally a fan of self-help books but this year I read several of them that were really good and so I wanted to share that one with you um, this book is basically um, learning how to not only get started working on projects um, stick to them and be very dedicated but also celebrating when we finish any kind of project. And it can be, um, like I said, a sewing project. It could be something that you're doing for work, um, tasks that you're completing for your family. So I think it's really important to celebrate the work that we're doing. Um, I know we're all really busy, um, but for me, it certainly feels good to recognize when I complete successfully complete a project and recognize it, maybe have Danny celebrate it with me. So I'm almost finished with a sewing pattern. Um, I'll have to show it to you next uh, Sunday because I don't ha quite have it finished. I'm still working out some smaller details for it, but um, it's really important to not feel like we're getting nowhere. I used to have some days where I'd work all day, but then at the end of the work day, I'd think to myself, I feel like I was working hard, but what did I do? Like, what did I get done? And um, I think reading that book called Start Finishing helped me to recognize that I am doing work. Sometimes the work is uh, not as substantial as finishing a pattern, but it's still getting work done. Um, as our chores in the house, that's getting work done. And so um, that was a great book. I really enjoyed reading it and I'll probably read it every year or two just to remind myself um, even these smaller tasks that I'm doing are, are important as far as the creative process or taking care of my family. So I think recognizing what we're doing is super important. So um, in lieu of the book review this week, I have a couple of fun related, um, one's a book and one's a calendar. Um, I'm first going to talk about the Kona calendar for 2020. I'll pop over to the side camera and show you what it's about. It's really fun. So my friend Vanessa got this calendar for me as a gift. If you're a quilter, you're probably familiar with Kona cotton solids. Um, it's a lovely calendar and it represents a lot of the, the colors that Kona produces for their solids. So each month features a quilt using a particular um, color of their rainbow, if you will. And each day of the month is the different Kona colors. And it's noted in the calendar as well. Um, the calendar, because this is printed on paper, is not a replacement for an actual Kona color card. So I pulled out my Kona color card. This is actually swatches of fabric. So obviously the fabric is going to rep represent what the actual fabric looks like in person better than a printout on paper. But I still thought this was a really fun idea. And so let me flip through some of the other months. So the patterns aren't included, but I just thought it was really fun um, inspiration to see different quilt projects represented each month. And 
seeing all the colors um, after the month is over you can certainly clip these out and arrange them as far as choosing fabrics for your next project. And I know I certainly do need a new calendar for 2020. It's coming up much faster than I thought it would. I can't believe Christmas is almost here as well. So each quilt was designed by a different person. That um, designer is noted on the calendar in case you'd like to look up the quilt if you're a fan of the quilt design. I thought this one was really cool, simple twist. This one's by Janice Ryan. Okay, so I, I guess I'll just, I really love, yeah, this is my favorite quilt in the book right here. So anyway, this is a really fun calendar in case you're in need of a calendar. And the other item that I wanted to show you was, um, if you're a fan of games or puzzles, this one is called the Happy Quilter Variety Puzzle. So there's all sorts of puzzles inside, as you can see from the front. Crossword puzzles, logic puzzles, crisscross, word search, and so on. So. Um, everything obviously is quilting, sewing, or fabric related. Lots of fun puzzles in there. And I thought this was just a really great idea for when I need to step away from the sewing room for a little bit and just work on and something fun. So there are 80 pages. The answers are in the back. And um, just something a little fun to, to work on if you're a fan of puzzles. Again, this is the Happy Quilter Variety Puzzles. And link to both. The calendar and the puzzle book are in the description. So most of you know that I'm a really big fan of card games and board games. We like to have family game nights. Um, so I'm always looking for new games or puzzles that we can work on. So let me know. I have another question for you. Let me know what your favorite game or puzzle is. Um, a game we've been playing recently um, is Code Names. You need a few players to play that, but it's a lot of fun. Uh, my kids like playing, it's challenging for the adults as well. Um, and there's other games that I've mentioned in the past. Um, Ask Danny, we have like a whole, um, what would you call it, Danny, bureau, where we keep the, the board games? Um, so it's a whole cupboard full of board games. It's actually overflowing a pantry. A pantry. I have uh, games stacked on the floor just because we've uh, overgrown the space where we keep our board games. So we have a lot of games, card games as well. Um, yeah, we're always looking to find new games and, and puzzles to play. So my demonstration for this week is something that I've, over the years, every once in a while I get an email about, and that's how to sew zipper tabs so that, that they look nice in your finished project. So um, I have this here is a project from Minikin Season 2. It's the Metro uh, Double Zip Pouch, and it has zipper tabs on the top. So most uh, zipper pouches do have a tab on either side of the zipper. It's meant to make the zipper look nice in the finished pouch. Um, if you have a zipper on the top without zipper tabs, the zipper kind of, I guess, fades into the seam allowance and it, um, I'm not sure how to describe it, but the tabs certainly make it look really nice. I'm gonna jump over to the side camera. I'm gonna show you the tabs up close and then we're gonna talk about some tricks that you can use to make your tabs look really nice in your finished pouch. Okay, so I've got my all my sample pieces over here. So I'm going to have Danny zoom in really quick so you can see, and then I'm going to shift that over. See how that zipper tab is really nice and rounded from the side at the top. It looks really crisp and clean as well. It's not getting cut off or getting sucked into the seam allowance. So let's talk about, um, before we talk about how to navigate through sewing, so that it looks nice. I'm gonna put a few pictures on the screen. Um, some viewers sent me some problem areas that they found uh, when they were sewing their zipper tabs in place. So yeah, Danny's gonna put these pictures on the screen. See in this orange pouch, how the tab is kind of getting sucked into the, the seam allowance. It's not a nice rounded tab. Um, that's one example. This one right here, I recognize that vinyl is a bit thicker to sew with, but again, the, the tab is kind of getting sucked in um, to that side seam in this brown pouch. Another example, this red pouch, again, um, the fabric in the tab is sort of getting sucked into the side seam. And then I have one more picture. Sometimes you'll not be able to catch the tab or it'll end up leaving raw edges or actually a hole at the top edge of your finished pouch. So we wanna avoid all of these um, areas and make the tab look nice. So 
what I did was I prepared, uh, I guess, a little sample of a zipper pouch. So I sewed my zipper to my exterior fabrics and to my lining fabrics. I like to work with a zipper that's about three quarters of an inch shorter than the top edge of the fabric. So as you can see, there's a gap on either side of the tab. It's not as long as the green fabric and that's um, on purpose so that we can sew the side seams without sewing that tab fabric. So when finishing the pouch, we're usually sewing the exterior fabrics right sides together and also the lining fabrics right sides together. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip my exterior so that it's right sides together and lining so that it's right sides together. So here's my lining fabric out here. We're gonna start with the exterior fabric. So I'm gonna go ahead and use some wonder clips to pin that in place. And you'll notice that at this top edge over here where the tab ends, so the pink fabric is my tab, you have the ends of the exterior fabric and this is sort of a, a flap over here. So when you sew this area, you wanna be sewing with this fabric pushed down like this. I've had times in the past where I've been sewing this area and the fabric kind of gets bunched up under the needle or push, pushed out of the way and it ends up being not pushed down like it should be like this. So if you find that problem happening to you, you can certainly go ahead and use, um, I like using this Fonz and Porter, it's a fabric glue marker, basically a, a small glue stick. You can also use any washable glue stick here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put some glue over here. You'll wanna set that with a hot dry iron and that glue will hold that fabric down and you'll do the same thing on the other side as well. It's really helpful because then you'll have one less thing to worry about, your fabric shifting, and then you can just concentrate on getting a nice stitch down your side area. Okay, so now that that's glued in place, I'm gonna go ahead and finish pinning the side and you can go ahead and put a wonder clip over here. This is the lining up here and you wanna make sure that the lining fabric is pushed out of the way. So if you find it helpful to kind of clip that out of the way for now, we're not sewing over the lining fabric at all, we're only sewing that exterior fabric. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish pinning the rest of the way around. And you want, if you're using the glue, you'll wanna also glue the opposite end as well. I'm just gonna put a pin on there for now, or wonder clip rather. Okay, so the most important thing about sewing this is as you're sewing for this particular project, I'll be using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. You don't wanna sew over that tab fabric at all. I know it can be harder to see, especially if your tab fabric is the same fabric as your exterior. I'll zoom in. Okay, Dan yeah, Danny says he's gonna zoom in right here. Thank you. Okay, so I'm gonna grab a pen also. I'll grab my purple pen. So when you're sewing your quarter of an inch seam allowance, you're not sewing, the needle is not going through that tab fabric at all. You're gonna be sewing just a hair to the outside of it. So as close as you can to the tab as possible. So I recognize different zipper feet may make this process a little bit harder. Um, for Especially for sewing pouches or bags that have a tab like this, I find it easier to sew one half at a time. Danny's gonna back up again, sorry about that. So you can start sewing at the center marking, sew this half. The reason that I started sewing at the center is because then you can orient the fabric so that it's going in toward your sewing machine in this direction. And you may find it helpful for sewing on top of the edge of the fabric without sewing the tab. Once you finish sewing this half, you'll take it off uh, the machine and set up the second half so that you can sew the second half as well. You may also find it helpful to sew most of the fabric with your regular foot and as you get closer to the top edge of the fabric, switching out to a zipper foot, which will allow you, get close, allow you to get closer to the tab while still holding onto your fabric. So every machine obviously has different feet. This is what my zipper foot looks like. It's a, for a Juki TL 2010Q and several other models of Juki machine. It's called a hinge zipper foot, but it's really narrow. Let me grab my ruler and, and uh, measure how narrow it is. So it's, the whole foot is only a quarter of an inch. It's really narrow, so that means the, the needle is coming down an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the foot. And using a zipper foot, regardless of what your zipper foot looks like, is helpful because you can get really close to that edge of the, the tab 
um, without having your foot get in the way. Um, when you go to sew the other half, the lining half, you'll do the same thing. Um, if you prefer, you can go ahead and glue this little flap down. And since your exterior is already sewn, you'll just go ahead and push the exterior out of the way because we're sewing one at a, one end at a time, the exterior first and then the lining second. So I've got um, a little pouch that I already sewed right here. As you can see, my lining and my exterior are sewn separately. And then when you go to turn everything right side out, you'll wanna use a turning tool to gently poke out the ends of the zipper tabs. Sometimes the, the issue is um, if you've ensured that you've sewn as close to the tab as you need to. Sometimes you just need to use a turning tool and I see I've left mine on my desk. So I like this precision turning tool, but whichever tool that you have um, is fine. And you just want to gently poke out the corners and ensure that you don't have any tabs stuck in your seam and no raw, raw edges showing either. And so this takes practice. If you don't get it exactly right on the first try, you can always rip a few seams and give it another go. Um, definitely practice will make this process a lot easier. And Dan I'm gonna have Danny zoom in on the, the tab area one more time just so um, everyone's clear on uh, what we're doing with this tab. So by not sewing over the tab fabric, you get a nice smooth tab in the corner. Same thing on the other end. I realize my my print might be a little distracting here, but yeah, you just want a nice rounded zipper tab and it to look nice and flat and finish both ends of your zipper. So hopefully um, that little discussion uh, will help you tighten up your, your zipper tabs on your pouches. I certainly didn't sew nice zipper tabs all the time. Definitely practice. Um, don't get frustrated. Don't be so hard on yourself. Each one will be better than the next. I promise that. All right, so I'm gonna be answering some questions live in just a second. So if you have a question for me, let me know in the comments, either a sewing related question, question about a notion or tool, um, whatever question you have, go ahead and type that in the comments right now on Facebook or YouTube. We also have a giveaway at the end of the show and I wanted to announce the, the winner of last week's giveaway, which is Clovis Perkins. So congratulations to Clovis. Uh, I've contacted you on social media and just go ahead and drop me an email with your mailing address and we'll get your prize off in the mail. So Barbara says, what about the top stitching after inserting the zipper? I admit I skipped on my little sample over there. I skipped the top stitching. Um, let me pull my sample back out though. Okay, so the, I, I'm glad you asked that question, Barbara, because the top stitching is important as well. If you top stitch um, your exterior and lining fabrics all the way to the edge of the fabric, you won't be able to separate your exterior and lining fabrics. And so I find it helpful to end the top stitching with the zipper tabs. So if I had done the top stitching, I would have started the top stitching with the edge of this pink zipper tab and sewing across to the other end of the other pink zipper tab, not from one end of the fabric to the other. The reason for that is you need to have the, the corners loose so that when you're sewing your exterior and lining fabrics right sides together, you have those edges free on the sides so that you can get up into the corners there and sew directly to the, the outside of those tabs. B says, would you use a zipper tab on the cotton candy in lieu of veering the one end? So that's a great question. I do have a cotton candy pouch right here. Let me explain why I didn't use zipper tabs on this particular project. So. For the cotton candy pouch, um, it actually opens wide and there's a zipper tail. So the reason that I designed this particular project with uh, a little zipper tail that hangs off of the side is I wanted the top stitching to be really easy. So of course it's easy to top stitch the end where uh, the zipper first opens, the beginning of the zipper, um, because the zipper's open obviously. Um, but I found that having a tab on the opposite end rather than a tail makes it so that you can't open this end flat and get a nice top stitch. So if there was a tab on this end, you'd have to navigate having the end kind of pinched in together and that might be, make it difficult for top stitching. Um, it is possible to have a tab on this particular project. You might just need to stop your top stitching um, maybe an inch away from the, the corner of the pouch just because uh, it's gonna get really difficult to navigate that if you can't have it nice and flat, which is 
um, I guess the purpose of anytime I have a little tail hanging off a pouch or a bag, um, it is definitely to make the top stitching easier. Um, also, some people like to have a little um, tab to hold on to when they open and close the zipper. Shannon says, Sarah, will you be stocking zippers with gunmetal color teeth? Um, my honest answer is I'm not sure yet. Uh, a couple months ago, I ran a poll in my Facebook group asking what types of finishes people were looking for um, in regards to the zippers by the yard. Um, some of the other finishes like gunmetal or rose gold were not as popular as the rainbow or silver. Um, so I'm looking into that in the future, but I guess I don't have an answer for that yet. Um, we do have some number three zippers by the yard on order in the rainbow finishes. So we'll start with those and then we'll see um, before we add additional uh, finishes for the zippers. Donna says, how do you get the side seam done correctly on the dumpling pouch? Um, it sounds like this is a question that might need uh, more, I guess, dedicated brain waves um, or more explanation. You can always feel free to email me if you have a question about um, if you're working on a pattern, or if you have a question about fabrics, my email is sarah at soulsweetness.com and that's Sarah with no H and you can email me anytime and I'd be happy to help with your question about uh, the dumpling pouch. Um, Lisa says, how did you get to the point of having the tabs at the ends of the zippers? Um, if you were talking about my little demonstration, my little green demo over here, I just sewed the zipper um, with the right side of the zipper to the exterior fabric first, and then I made a sandwich with the lining fabric. So let me see if I can simulate that for you right here. Okay, so here's my exterior fabric right here. I first sewed that along the top edge, right sides together with the right side of the zipper. And then here's the lining fabric that I added next. So I added that lining fabric to the wrong side of the zipper. So essentially the zipper needs to be sandwiched in between the exterior and the lining. So exterior on one side, lining on the other side, and then I sewed that seam again. Some people like to sew that seam all in one go, meaning layering the exterior fabric, zipper, lining, pinning, and then sewing in one go. Um, I just feel like it's more beginner friendly to add one piece at a time. Shannon says, I second the request for butterfly zipper pulls. Oh, I. You know what, I'll have to look into that. Didn't even think about that. Butterfly pulls, I'm writing myself a note. Okay, good suggestion. Good suggestion, Shannon, thank you so much. Denise says, how do you keep the sides of the material from fraying when sewing them together? My last wallet, I did use a fray check and it worked pretty good, but for large uh, fabric pieces, um, you have to, to use a lot. Um, I would suggest the fray check, but you said you've already tried that. Um, I guess perhaps handling the fabric as little as possible. I do recognize I, could, I can even see a bit of fraying happening here in my little sample, but um, you just need to work with it enough to get that those seams sewn and then the, the fraying fabric can certainly be hidden in with your seam allowance. Um, if that's not the answer to your question, though, feel free to email me again, uh, sarah at soulsweetness.com. Margaret says, do you have a project for all the leftover zipper remains you get from cutting zippers down? It seems like such a waste, although it is easier when installing a zipper to use one that's longer. I definitely concur with that. I always like using a zipper that's longer so that I can measure um, in the center of the zipper, especially if I'm trimming it down so that I can eliminate uh, the metal zipper stops on either end of the zipper. I have seen people make um, little decorative zipper pulls with uh, zipper remains, but I haven't made one myself, so I'm gonna write a note to myself for that one as well. Um, zipper tape, zipper pulls. Maybe we can talk about that on a future episode of Social Sunday. All right, Terry says, hi Sarah, do you have any pattern that has a zipper going across the top and down the side with a gusset? Also, would you consider designing a bag with a circular handle in metal or wood? So I've always been intrigued um, when I see those bags with the, usually it's a, a rounded handle made of wood, usually a pair of handles. Um, I just wasn't sure I don't know. I like the style of that bag. I wasn't sure how other people felt about it, so I guess I, that's why I let that idea set for a while, but it sounds like you like those bags as well. Um, 
I'm going to write myself a note. Uh, what was the first half of Terry's question, though? I didn't answer the first half. Well, Sarah, start focusing on answering <laughs> quickly. Have to find it. Yes. Okay. Uh, we'll get back to the second, uh, the first half of your question, Terry. Sorry about that. Denise says, if you use pinking shears on the fabric to stop fabric from fraying while sewing, will it mess up, mess up the measurements? That's a great question. Um, let me answer Denise's question, then I'll get back to Terry's. So leave Terry's on the screen, Danny. Hi, Captain. Um, that's a tough question. So I have a lot of charm packs. Um, I think I have some on the shelf behind me. All right, so the charm packs that I have, I'll have pinked edges, which um, it's still doable. Um, mostly charm packs are used for um, quilts or quilt blocks. So because these, e these edges are pin pin pinked, um, they take a little bit more attention to making sure that you're lining up your seam allowance to the edge of the fabric. So it definitely is possible to do that with your bag. Um, I would suggest uh, obviously practicing first on a scrap of fabric, but when you're using your pinking shears, um, in order to preserve the seam allowance, you wanna make sure that the, I guess the, the peaks, um, if we're referring to this pinked edge as peaks and valleys, you wanna make sure that the, the peaked edge is in line with the edge of the fabric so that you're not cutting off additional fabric. But it is possible and you would just use um, the peaked edge, um, the, the pointy edge, um, to line up your seam allowance or the edge of your sewing machine foot. Okay, so the getting back to the first half of Terry's question, do you have any pattern that has a zipper going across the top and down the side um, with a gusset? So I'm assuming you're looking for something, the zipper continuing down the side of the bag or pouch. So if that's the question, I don't currently have a bag exactly like that. I do have a backpack from my second book called the uh, the Shades Backpack that does have a like a zippered flap. It kind of comes across the top down. So I guess it's it would be th sort of three edges. So not exactly what you're looking for. Um, I also like to see sometimes when people have suggestions, they have a specific bag in mind. Maybe they saw it online. Um, or in a magazine, something like that. Um, I do like to look at photos for inspiration. So if you're looking for a particular bag, feel free to send me a photo. Sometimes it's easier to see a photographic example um, rather than a description. But if you feel like doing that, um, you can certainly email me photos anytime. Shannon says, have you ever quilted cork for a project? If so, do we need a special thread weight? And I love your cork. Thank you so much for the compliment, Shannon. Um, I don't think I've ever finish an actual project using quilted cork. I have quilted cork in the past though. I like using Orifil 40 weight thread. Um, it's 100% cotton, but you can also use a polyester thread for that as well. And um, a walking foot is certainly handy, especially if you're quilting your um, cork fabric to, to interfacing such as foam interface, and that walking foot will definitely come in handy. I do have a video on my YouTube channel in case you missed it, how to quilt fabric. Um, for a bag and in that particular video I quilted um, diagonal lines kind of like a diamond shape into fabric attached to interfacing and I would certainly use the same method for quilting the fabric uh, the cork fabric to the the foam interfacing as well so I think Danny Danny so people want to see your uh, rockstar bag back there they want to know what it was oh okay Danny said there were a bunch of questions about this bag back here uh, this is the Rockstar bag. This one was made for me by Rock Baby Scissors. Um, I don't remember the particular fabric line for this bag, but I do know it was made by Wyndham Fabrics. And Christy used black vinyl for the straps and the um, tabs on the side of the bag. Uh, we don't currently have a video for the Rockstar bag yet, but this is going to be the first on the list for the videos for next year. So. We will have a video for this particular pattern shortly. Yeah, this is one of my favorite bags. Um, it was sort of a, I don't want to call it a selfish sew, but there's some bag patterns that I work on that I'm interested in, in as far as the design, and then there's some that I'm interested in as far as wanting a bag for myself, and so the Rockstar bag is definitely that bag, uh, that particular bag for me. All right, were you calling it on the questions? All right, Danny's calling it on the questions, so I apologize if I did not get to your question live. We'll be back next Sunday. Um, I think Danny's gonna be on the show next Sunday. Uh, we'll be chatting and answering more questions next week, so I hope you'll join us then. So uh, the giveaway prize for this week, I decided, is a $40 gift certificate to my website, sosweetness.com. 
um, I will be drawing one randomly drawn winner at the end of the day this Saturday and that winner will win the prize. So we draw out of all of the answers from Facebook and YouTube, wherever you watch the show. And all you have to do to enter the giveaway is answer this question. And my question is, what is your favorite charitable organization? So go ahead and let me know um, that in the, the comments. I know um, getting close to Christmas, we're certainly thinking about um, charities and those sorts of things. So um, let me know what your favorite one is. And thank you so much for watching Social Sunday. I'll see you again next Sunday. I hope you have a great week and happy sewing. Bye everybody. Thank you.